I promise you this isn't clickbait, all right? So Apollo, a product of the Daylight Protocol, is a token that doesn't go down in value. So we're going to go into how the algorithm was formed in order for this to happen. So we're focusing solely on the price action, all right? We're not talking about the market cap, the circular link supply, the backed value in BUSD. We're going to get into this a bit later on. We're solely focusing on why this token cannot go down in value with math as well. As you know, if you've been following this channel, I always bring math forward. I always try to put this in front to show in numbers why this happens or that happens. And this one is also traded on the Orion DAX. So there's are, there are also a few uh, profits and few entitlements that will benefit the daylight token as well. And we're going to get into all of this right now. I'm sure people are eager to find out how is this even possible. So yeah, let's jump quickly into this. All right, so the Apollo token. So this is how it goes essentially. All right, so like I said, uh, the backed assets of this token, so the underlying asset is BUSD. So you take that BUSD, you can mint the token through that BUSD based on the current price of the token. So you mint and you redeem. So you're not technically buying and selling it's kind of a different process because there's no liquidity pool anywhere else, but you're technically going through a contract every time you want to create the token or you want to put it back. So minting the token creates it, redeem, redeeming the token burns it. Now, you can argue that if, for example, the minting and the redeeming offset each other, then technically the circulating supply, there's no effect on that, but you'd be wrong. So, yeah... In essence, minting does increase the circulating supply of the Apollo token and redeeming reduces it. Correct? Because when you redeem, you take away BUSD and you reduce the circulating supply of Apollo. Now, all of this BUSD that people use to mint the Apollo token, all of this gonna go into a contract address that is the backed asset contract address. So all of this BUSD back the price of Apollo. And how is the price determined? Very simple. Like we mentioned at the beginning, we have the circulating supply, which is determined by the ratio of minting and redeeming, correct? And you have the BUSD that is backing that uh, Apollo in circulation. So you take that BUSD amount, you divide it by the circulating supply, and you get the price of one Apollo token. Very simple, very straightforward. You're not buying or selling through a liquidity pool, you're just minting and redeeming whenever you need to. And there's also actually a buy and sell tax. Okay, so the term buy and sell, like I said, are not technically true. So minting and redeeming tax, so to speak. And in both cases, it's 8%, which is cool. And that split is also equal when you mint and when you redeem. So that 8%, you have 3% that mints Apollo again and burns the tokens. Which is a bit different because when you mint, you take the Apollo. But with this one, it creates the tokens and then min and then burns them again, meaning it's a null action, but the BUSD will be added to the contract. So more BUSD, same circulating supply, price increases. And the other 5%, you have 1% that actually leaves the contract in BUSD form, buys back the DAIL token and burns it. And so that is, for example, one benefit that goes back into the daylight holders. And then you have 4% that go into something they call protocol reserves. Now, I assume those are reserves that perhaps they're going to be used in the future to inject back into the Apollo contract in case there's something in regards to the BUSD reserves. Now, those taxes actually are pretty interesting if you try to, you know, go into the math of it, like I said. So let's take a quick run up in regards to how buys would also benefit price action as well as sells. Now buys, of course, because when you buy something, meaning you're putting more into it, the price will increase. In the normal liquidity pool manner, you'd know how it goes. But here, you are literally exchanging 100% of your BUSD, which will go to the contract, but you're getting 92% in equivalent value of Apollo. Remember, there's an 8% tax, so deduct that, you get 92% of the value in Apollo. Meaning what? 
less circulating supply versus more BUSD, the price increases. Now, when you sell, this is how it happens eventually. Uh, also, sorry, small detail as well, because you're not only going to be uh, getting only 92% of the token, there's also 3%, remember, that is going to go and mint additional Apollo tokens and burn it. So that means that the circulating supply, even though it will only be adding 92% of what you buy, there's going to be even less being added from that 3%. So that's almost 89%. So the discrepancy increases in this case. Now, when you sell, here's how it goes. When you sell, technically speaking, 97% of that BUSD will leave the contract. Why? Because you have a tax of 8%, correct? But 3% will actually re-enter the contract, even though the other 5% will effectively leave immediately will not be coming back right we're talking about buying the daylight token and the protocol is also those five percent will leave as well but then three percent will be added back in busd making 97 percent in total leaving the contract so you have 97 percent leaving versus 100 plus percent of tokens also being redeemed and burned so again you see the ratio between adding busd removing tokens vice versa between minting and redeeming is is always in the favor of the busd and the contract address which means with a higher the with a higher numerator here in the ratio of busd versus circulating supply meaning price will constantly increase now i'm not gonna stop here all right i'm not gonna just do all of this talk without any numbers to show you that i actually put in several examples to see if the price actually increases the more we sell without any buys and this is what i got right i'm gonna show you straight now i just refreshed the metrics just to give you a quick rundown a quick example of how this happens so right now we have that much in the busd contract so those are the assets backing the apollo token in circulation which are about 174,285. and based on the ratio the current price is about 1.19 dollars now, of course, if you go here, if you're on that up, you get 1.19, correct? So, scenario one, someone just sold 100 tokens. So, like I said, when you sell 100 tokens, the BUSD leaving the contract is 97%. So, not 100%, 97% because that 3% is going to buy back, sorry, mint back Apollo and burn it. So, we'll re-enter the contract again. And by doing so... This is how many tokens the Apollo contract or the Apollo circulating supply, so to speak, will also be removing after burning those tokens. So we're minting those and we're going to be burning them in the process, correct? So in essence, my backed assets in BUSD will be reduced by that much. My circulating supply will be reduced by 100 plus those tokens that i just bought and burned correct and that's my current price based on my new metrics so as you can clearly see after selling 100 tokens the price didn't move whatsoever okay let's increase those number of tokens let's put a thousand all right price is still on 1.19 5000 still the same 10000 Nothing, nothing is changing, right? You can clearly see that even though I'm selling and constantly selling Apollo tokens, the price isn't decreasing and we're not talking about the buys here. We're literally talking about worst case scenario where buys stop today and only sells occur. Let's do 100k. Boom, look at the price. The price has increased when we sold 100k. The thing about this algorithm is that even though if you put taxes aside, the price would most likely flinch a bit downwards, not that much though, with more selling, of course, because again, it's a ratio, right? But with the taxes on top, the more you sell, that 8% will start to actually show itself more and more. So that 8% when you sell will actually be put in the facade and be more impactful on the price and push it upwards conclusion 
if selling is increasing the price at a very exponential rate, what about buying, right? So buying will certainly, if you have a ratio, a healthy ratio of buys and sells, the price will not go, cannot go down even once, right? It's only going to go up. Worst case scenario, the price will remain the same, the same, sorry, or, uh, best case scenario, price will increase. The only thing, the only small caveat here, and you know that I always bring forth uh, objective overviews if you've been following this channel one is why would anyone buy a token that will most probably stop at a certain point when it comes to price appreciation so how are they benefiting if there's an eight percent in eight percent out so that's 16 percent if you immediately mint and redeem and the price appreciation if there are no actual demand on this won't be there so what's the benefit of this the answer is going to come in my next video. The answer is there are products that are going to leverage the Apollo token and will make it as an incentive for investors to mint that token to enter those products. So you have a cool algorithm. Next step is what? You need to add utility to it. And by utility, not only utility from this perspective, but usage of the token to add for people. If they're attracted to the product, they will enter through the process. And the second thing that I want to mention as well is that if at some point that contract goes to zero, so if I don't have any more BUSD, so people are selling, okay, the price is increasing, that's cool, but people are selling. Remember that when you redeem, you get BUSD. What if that goes to zero and there's no more BUSD to redeem and the price is at five bucks, let's say. Uh, cool, the price is high, but there's no BUSD to get back. Other than the normal supply and demand ratio so investors in investors out there's going to be a launch bet that will i think it's already live actually i'm i need to do more research on this and most probably my next video or my next next video will be on this so revenues from this that will be in form of apollo being held to launch a product will be injected back that's one future implementations the protocol reserves and team backup so there is backup behind this in order for that BUSD reserve to still be in a healthy ratio, so to speak. All right. So hope you stuck around till the end. I hope you understood what I explained. I showed you the example. So again, this is not something that is that is absolutely uh, pulled out from someone's head that has no backing. There is an algorithm. There are examples. There's math. But again, as always, you have to tread lightly because whenever you see something coming up with a very novel idea behind it, at the beginning, you need to, you know, dig deeper in order to find the small gaps in it. Now, for my, you know, for my research, for my own personal takeaway from this, I think the gap here is the BUSD in the contract. So if that gets depleted, then this would be over. So the challenge is to keep the BUSD flowing in from investors, from other revenue streams, from the launchpad, etc. So let's see what happens. Thank you for sticking around. See you in the next one. Have a good one.